All right, friends, we are back with your favorite podcast show of the week. It is Location Weekly. Uh, It's episode number 558, and we're recording uh, on uh, March the 1st. Yes, it is a new month. Uh, Spring is on the horizon, and uh, Ariana is back, as you can see. So, uh, you know, we had that fun little episode last week while I was in Germany, and Karsten and I recording from the Alps. but, uh, you know, now, now we're back to reality uh, in our normal places. Uh, Brianna, how are you? Had a good vacation? I did. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, you were, you, were uh, you know, in the Alps and I was um, on the beach in Dominican Republic. So um, not too shabby for either of us, right? And, right? and I'm sure it was great to see Karsten as you guys sent me pictures of cheersing beers. <laughs> yes. Um, so yes, I had a great vacation feeling somewhat refreshed, you know, a little tired from travel, but it's good to be back. And, um, the cold wasn't too unbearable coming back to, so that's good. And spring is like on the horizon, you know, ready to plan another trip though. It's like now that I started traveling, I just, I have the bug. How about you? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and I think like for me too, like the one thing is, is that I've, I've noticed is like all the conferences that you know were sort of the regular things that i would be at are all coming back now so shop talk is back south by southwest is back like all these things are are starting to happen again so my schedule is actually filling up for you know the rest of the year here pretty quickly so i know i've been seeing people posting pictures at mobile world congress and friends that are there and having a little bit of fomo but (laughs) <laughs> next year next year we'll, we'll do that one we'll see yeah all righty well we have a good show for you four stories as usual and uh let abriana kick us off all right well for those of you who are big anime fans this is an interesting one um sailor's moon which if you're not familiar with it's a japanese it's, i guess shoujo manga series i don't even know how you say that because i'm not into anime i mean i think it's really cool but don't really have a big idea there but this is a show that ran for a long period of time in the 90s i guess and you know, it's like one of those really well-known ones. And um, they have, have launched this like very interesting thing. So IC cards or their contactless smart cards that they use for commuting um, in Taipei, uh, they they have this on the metro system, you know, you have like this card and rather than having to kind of like check fare, buy the ticket, you just like tap to pay sort of thing. So you have this like, it just deducts from your prepaid balance. Um, and so Easy Card with the, the Taipei Metro now is actually offering this interesting thing where you, you can buy this replica of a Sailor's Moon, um, it's called a moon stick. And it's um, some, you know, one of the heroines, the lunar heroine like carries this. I mean, if you imagine like it's a, it looks like a kid's magic wand with like a moon on the end of it, it's very interesting. Um, but now you can actually use that. It's a fully functioning easy card. So you can just like, you know, walk with your magic wand through the Metro and use that to tap to pay. You can, uh, you know, apparently you could use it at also like at a mini mart or department stores, anywhere that you have this contactless payment that you can use that accepts the easy card payments. And then the jewels light up when the, when the transaction is happening. Um, so this is really interesting. You know, I was trying to think if this is something that I would like you know, walk through the the subway with in New York and just like carry around my wand, you know, tap to pay this and that. Um, probably not, but it is interesting because, you know, in that culture, this is huge, right? This is a big deal. Uh, so I really expect them to, to be able to like, to see a lot of that happening. So if you have one, like, I want to see a picture of this. I'm going to have to kind of follow it, see if I can find something on Twitter um of somebody using this but it's really interesting so it makes me think of what other contactless payment kind of icons will will kind of come out of this will there be something from sports teams or you know anything else that people are are really excited about um but yeah interesting one what do you think (laughs) Yeah, I mean, having been to Japan many times over the last number of years, I mean, definitely, you know, anime and and that whole sort of culture is a huge deal there, right? And uh, I even went to a, um, 
like a, a dinner theater kind of thing one time where it was like all these anime characters like in a in a battle against each other while you're sitting eating dinner like sort of medieval times but you know on steroids kind of thing um so it, it's massive right and and i think that um i think it's kind of fun it's interesting um obviously it's not something i would do but i could see people doing it there and i could see a bunch of you know girls you know wandering around with their little magic moon stick and tapping things you know i and i think it's interesting because i think that you know translating that over here to north america like you know perhaps you know disney could do something i mean they have their man you know their um you know their little uh, wristwatch things right um and so on but like i could see you could go around with you know you know uh Cinderella's magic wand or, you know, some prince, one of the princesses, you know, and tapping things and little girls, you know, getting excited about that and paying for stuff and having it light up or whatever. I mean, it's got a, you know, a, a chance that you could get out of control for the parents pretty quickly if they're tapping, 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 right, and buying stuff. But um, I, I, I think there's potential, right? I think there is potential in certain environments, you know, theme parks, things like that. Sure. Uh, that could be interesting. So, you know, um, who knows? But I like it. Yeah. So it sells for about sixty-five bucks uh, U.S. dollars, um, and um, yeah, who knows? Who knows? But it's interesting. It's different, at least. At least they're trying something. So, all right, on to our uh, our second story. Walmart, um, you know, has been talking a lot lately about, you know, sort of their announcements around becoming more digital and changing up their stores to be more interactive and all kinds of things like that. And so one of the things that they announced recently is, is that they are getting heavy into live streamed shopping. And so they've created eight new themed and regularly scheduled. So these are like, you know, time scheduled events on the calendar, shopping events. Um, and uh, they've teamed up with a, a company called Talk Shop Live to power this, which is a California startup. And uh, yeah, they're they're basically um, it's kind of like you know, sort of a modern day version of QVC or Home Shopping Network or something like that. But you know, brought to you by Walmart and live streamed you know, around their brands and their products and things like that. Um, you know, on the internet as opposed to on you know on television. Um, so I think this is interesting. They've got a number of brands and, you know, yeah, celebrity social media people involved with this already. Um, they're live streaming content on, you know, uh, TikTok and YouTube and, you know, Instagram and a bunch of other platforms. Uh, the shows recently, they've done like theme shows around Black History Month um, and black founded brands, you know, associated with that. Uh, they've done Women Entrepreneurs Week. They've done Baby Days, um, which, you know, is sponsored by Pampers, you know, Procter & Gamble. So I, I think this is interesting, right? And if you remember, uh, Brandon, we, we talked about a story a few weeks ago where a big shopping mall uh, was, you know, starting to create a service where the tenants within the mall could live stream their products out to audiences at home. And I, I think, you know, we're seeing this kind of new trend emerge where it's kind of this blend of, you know, if people aren't coming back out physically necessarily, you know, why not, you know, allow the bricks and mortar retailer to kind of broadcast out, you know, their, their content, their commerce uh offerings you know to people and have them shop online that way too right um it, it's kind of like this hybrid of you know the physical being manifested in the digital um as opposed to like the pure play e-commerce thing and i think it's i think it's pretty interesting um and i think we're going to see more and more of this uh in the months to come what are your thoughts yeah you know this reminded me of one that i saw um it was shop black friday um, that Google had promoted not too long ago with T-Pain, where he was like going through all of these, like, um, you know, obviously like black owned businesses and products and, and just kind of going through all of them. And it was really fun. It was like this whole retro theme that they put together, um, but you could shop the products and like watch the video, which was really cool. But this being live, I think is really interesting as well. And I think we're just like scratching the surface here, you know, um, you know, with a lot of the, I guess, the work that I'm doing on Samsung ads with the smart TV and you've got like the Samsung free and the Samsung TV plus and all of these different offerings, you know, being able to have that interactive experience, I think is, 
is really coming, not only from an advertising perspective and being able to shop ads, but also from, you know, those, um, those actual channels and those, and those, uh, you know, apps that are there. So I think there's like so much more to come from this. And I, and I, I'm expecting it to be like, definitely, um, you know, a big wave that, that comes in the future. So I find this very interesting and I like that they're trying something with the startup as well. Um, and kind of how they're, they're partnering up and, and trying new things. I mean, we, we know Walmart, like they're always, you know, innovating and they have their incubator and, and they're always, um, you know, coming up with fresh new ideas, at least to try whether they actually come to fruition. It'll be interesting one to watch in my opinion. For sure. Yeah. So another thing, um, you know, using kind of that social interaction is Snapchat is starting to match their members and users with live concerts. So they just announced this new partnership with Ticketmaster. And um, basically it's letting, you know, all their users stay updated around concerts, shows, and they can invite their friends, find it a little bit easier. So they have this, it's like a, it's called an in-app mini, which is like a mini, you know, app kind of a compartment within the Snap app. Um, and it and it functions a little bit sort of like a dating service, like a Tinder. Um, so you can curate this this local selection of shows based on your taste. So it'll have like a brief survey, um, and then they'll they'll compile this list of artists and, and you know around specific interests that you might have, and then you can swipe right or left depending if you're interested. Um, and you can also use the Snap Maps to display like upcoming concerts that are nearby. Um, you know, one thing that kind of surprised me though. And this um, this announcement was that Snap actually recently had this like you know gain in users. They gained 13 million new users um, in the last quarter, and that actually surprised me with the just like mass uh, massive I guess like transition and focus on TikTok. But you know they definitely have already kind of dipped their toe in the water because recently they they had this Universal Music Group. Um, discovery tool that they had launched within the snap app and so now they're kind of like taking another step so i like this i think this is really interesting in terms of like being able to discover things that are nearby and in, in a different way um and also just kind of curating things to your taste so i think this is fun like i would actually go on to snapchat to use this feature maybe where instead of having to like search for everything that's coming, you know, just go through, going through Ticketmaster, just searching in, you know, random areas um, or by the actual venue, being able to see everything that's nearby, um, you know, might be really interesting. So I, I do like this feature, even though I am not an avid Snapchat user. I mean, I have the app, I can't even tell you the last time I opened it, but this might be something that I would actually open the app and use. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm also not a big Snapchat user. It's not really my demographic. My my daughter and my son use it constantly. Um, so, you know, certainly, you know, they're they're targeting the under 25 demographic here is uh, kind of you know the the market that they're really going after. So, uh, yeah, I think this is super useful. Like, I think uh, this is a really interesting partnership between Ticketmaster and them. And I think that, you know. Um, Obviously, Snapchat has, you know, a lot of location data, you know, associated with it. So kind of connectivity between the users, where they are, what concerts are happening around them. Um, I think that's that's very interesting. Um, and I think at the end of the day, like, you know, it's not like Ticketmaster has that type of engagement, right, with with their, um, you know, their subscribers or their users on their own app. I mean, you tend to use, at least for me anyways, I tend to use Ticketmaster, you know, when I bought a ticket and then it's sitting there in the Ticketmaster, you know, sort of mobile wallet kind of thing, right, uh, for presentation. But it's not something I'm going to looking for, you know, other events around me. So whereas Snapchat, you know, uh, I think it's, you know, something that people are on all the time and engaged with it, um, you know, many minutes a day. And I think if you can then, you know, surface things around them that are interesting. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense to me, right? So, you know, where I am, uh, where I live, there's there's a, a local bar that does live music, you know, just on, the, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday kind of thing. And there's always a different band there and so on. And it's not like, you know, something you necessarily that would be available in this because you're not going to go buy tickets for that on Ticketmaster. But I think if you could extend this into not just, you know, paid concerts, but also, events that are just uh you know music that's happening around you whether it's free or not um i think that would be 
you know, really, really cool too. So yeah, I think that one, this is very in line with kind of that discovery aspect that they've been leading with around like the lens and like searching for what's around yeah. you and all of those things. So it's definitely in line with that. But also when you think about the small business aspect of it or like the event space community idea, you certainly have the capability of like posting those events, just like you would add a special like filter or location sticker um, that you can custom uh, customize and create. So I think there's a lot of opportunity for that in the future as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right, on to our final story then. Uh, so we're going to jump over to China now, uh, and specifically uh, Shenzhen. Um, and so there's a company called Indare Innovation. It's Indare is one word, I-N-D-A-R-E, innovation. And they've created a, a, um, a collection of what they're calling smart urban furniture. Uh, it's branded uh, Futian. Um, and so the idea of this is, is that, like, if you remember few years back now, um, you know, uh, New York City deployed all these sort of Wi-Fi kiosks throughout the city, turned all the old pay phones into like these Wi-Fi hubs with information and so on, and sort of creating, you know, a bit of this network there. Um, and kind of taking a page out of that, but, you know, going way beyond that, they've created a whole suite of different pieces of furniture from benches to trash cans to street lamps to all kinds of things here. And they're kind of starting to deploy this stuff like outdoor public furniture. If if you will, uh, around the city of Shenzhen. Um, and it's all about like branding the city as futuristic and kind of connected and and all that kind of stuff. And so it, it's it's really interesting. So it's got like embedded AI technology and, and smart interfaces, um, you know, so it can uh, give you information on what's going on in the city, where, you know, traffic, weather, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, if there's any safety issues, uh, it's built in GPS, you know, for certain pieces of it. So they've got street lamps that are acting as climate monitors and collecting information, um, you know, that way, feeding that into their, you know, smart grid type of system. They've got trash bins that, you know, um, have a special uh, tilt mechanism built into them, so it makes it super easy, uh, you know, for the uh, the local um, trash removal, you know, crews to come and pick those things up, and uh, kind of they um, they they lock once they're full and stuff on on the go, so that you know you know that they're kind of full, and then like it sends a signal to you know the city crews that like time to come pick this one up. So they're optimizing routes and things like that. You know, you're not just picking something up, you know, and, and because it's on the route you're picking it up when when it's full and it needs to be picked up right so you know things like that i think are really interesting so it's you know the benches you know and this and their their screens there's there's um like bike you know sort of uh parking spots and rentals with screens there and information on you know recommended routes to you know to go uh riding or things like that so i think it's really interesting right and i think you know, the more I sort of started thinking about this story and, and what they're putting out here, you know, I was thinking back to a few years ago before the pandemic, Google had, you know, signed this big deal to build this smart city in, on the Toronto waterfront. And they then, when COVID hit, they kind of, you know, killed the whole thing. And it's a bit of a shame because I think like we would have, you know, had this kind of whole futuristic sort of, you know, waterfront city neighborhood with not just this kind of stuff, but well beyond this, um, like they were going to, you know, handle the transportation systems and the water systems and the electrical systems and everything all with like smart technology. So, um, you know, but I think there's definitely as, you know, you think about urban planning and city building and, and growth, and, um, I think more and more you need, you know, the sort of the fabric and the elements and the furniture, if you will, in the, within the city to, to be smart and to be connected so that it can be optimized for, you know, both the citizens and for, you know, sort of the, um, you know, citizen services, the public government uh, offerings as well. So I think it's, it's cool. What are your thoughts? Uh, I mean, I don't have a lot to add. I think you covered it really well here, but I do find it very interesting and I do like the, um, you know, it's interesting, like when you go through public places and seeing how things are run down or how things are taken care of and like how they're actually being used um, and thinking about how they could be better, not only like you mentioned, um, for the citizens and the people who you know live there or tourists who are visiting, but also for the city itself and how it can be 
uh, maintained in a better way. And so, you know, add on top of that, maybe connectivity and, um, you know, reception, you know, Wi-Fi access, anything there. And I think that um, it's like a great blend of, of uh, value propositions in my opinion. So, yeah. hundred percent. So that's it. That's our show for this week. You've been listening and watching episode number 558 of Location Weekly. We thank you as always uh, for your time. If you have story ideas, reach out to us. If you have feedback, we'd love to hear that too. And uh, Brianna, I, you know, obviously yes. there's other things on our mind as well this week. So yeah, just one final note before we sign off today. You know, I want to just share that our our you know our hearts go out to all those that are you know in, in Ukraine. Um, and you know, our thoughts and prayers are, are with you and, um, from the U S from Canada, you know, we, we are, we are rooting for you and, uh, you know, just, just hoping for, for peace to come very soon. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's just, it's a terrible situation and, uh, just hope that, uh, you know, they can work something out and get a ceasefire and, and, you know, just stop, um, the nonsense that's going on because it's just it's terrible like people are dying and uh it's tough to watch especially when you're way over here on the other side of the the world so yeah all right everybody have a good week bye